Well, winter meetings, a wrap. Eh, not a whole lot going on there. Shohei Otani, we're thinking, is going to announce something over the weekend. Juan Soto ended up with the Yankees. Former Cub, now with the Reds. We're going to get into all that kind of a baseball winter meetings wrap. Thank you guys for being here with us on the Cubs baseball channel. Like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Let's talk some Cubs baseball. All right, with Chad Anderson, I'm Mick Gillespie, fresh back from Nashville, Tennessee, where we got a chance to meet Craig Council. Uh, first time I met him in person, uh, and you too, Chad, and then uh, got a chance to talk to Jed Hoyer and, and saw a lot of the writers that follow the Cubs on a daily basis, got some good content out there. And now we're kind of just sitting back and thinking about what didn't happen. And that was Shohei Otani could have really made a splash and gone ahead and announced that he was going to sign with the Cubs. Instead, the Yankees trade for Juan Soto. That was really the, the biggest thing that happened. We knew it, it, it was telegraphed, right? And that happened yesterday. Yeah. And then uh, also yesterday, uh, Jamer Candelario becomes uh, a red. And he's going to make like $45 million to do it. Oh, Mick, good to see you again. Um, enjoyed hanging out with you the last day or so. Um, you're looking fresh. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> looking fresh. That's nice. Uh, I don't feel fresh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you, you look better than Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Wednesday was really not fresh. <laughs> All right. So, you know, have you ever felt, think of it this way. Have you ever seen a blockbuster deal like Juan Soto happen with like, such little reaction and hype around it. Yeah, right. I feel like nobody's talking about it. Yeah. Like they it happens and we kind of felt like this was going to happen for about a week because the Yankees seem to be the biggest aggressors in in pursuit of Soto. Uh supposedly 10 teams checked in on him, three teams made offers. The Yankees must have blown everyone away cuz we never even heard who the other two teams were. But that was it. Um and again, that's a big move. And it, it feels like nothing happened because everybody's still so locked in on Otani. And Mick, as a Cubs fan, like as an actual fan, you know, I'm not hired by the Cubs. I don't work for the Cubs. And I sit here and get nauseous all the time over games and stress <laughs> out, you know, like that's who <laughs> right. I am. I love yeah, right. sports. Right. And Die hard. I am. And if you're the Cubs and or a Cubs fan and you're looking at this offseason, when – Craig Council was hired. My expectations went from, eh, what are the Cubs going to do in this offseason? Rossi's on the hot seat next year. Are they going to make any moves? What are they going to do? How are they going to get better? Can we win the division next year? To, oh my God, we're going to be in the NLCS next year. Right. Like, just like that. It Whether that's fair or not, that's how everybody felt and what the reaction was. Now, nothing's happening. And all I can say as a fan is when you look at all the pieces that are out there, think about these names, okay? Otani, Yamamoto, uh, Matsui. Um, I always mess up his name. Inagama, something like that. I always mess him up. Uh, Bellinger, Snell, Hayter, Glasnow, Bieber, like Soto, who's now gone. He's off the table. All these names are out there, right? Mm -hmm. If the Cubs don't land any of these big names, I better see that the Dodgers spent 700 million on right. Tony. Like I better see that the number was so stupid. You look at it and Jed Hoyer can go, guys, that's just a dumb number. Like we weren't going to be there, but if the Dodgers come in at say 550, right. And the Cubs didn't go for 575 or 600 or something like that. Right. Like, I feel like we have a right to be pissed off at that point because there's all this excitement, anticipation, anxiety <laughs> about these names and what they're going to do and all this right. money that's going to be spent. And remember, Mick, we did a show about the Cubs having the fourth highest payroll in Major League Baseball, and they have no superstar name. Right. I mean, Dansby Swanson's the superstar name, right? Like, that's it now that you don't have Bellinger. And so, I don't know. Am I wrong? Like, am I... 
over the top on that. Like it just, I better see if the Cubs don't get a big name or two big names, I better see that everybody else spent money in a stupid way. Like they're terrible at budgeting. Right. Otherwise well, I feel like you have a yeah. right idea with that. No, I think you make some good points and you, you kind of represent the, the voice of Cubs fans right now. A lot of them, and a lot of Cubs fans are, all in, hey, it'd be great to have Otani, right? Yeah. And then some Cubs fans are like, you know what? I would much rather spend that on uh, Snell and starting pitching, you know, and 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 kind of build up like that. The, the thing you got to remember, it's not just going to be about the number. Um, I got this gut feeling that Otani is comfortable in L.A. He, he's, he is a mega star. And I think he picked the Angels because at the time, the National League didn't have the DH. I think he would have went to the Dodgers in the first place. I think he likes the Hollywood lifestyle, the weather out there, kind of like this larger-than-life persona. And if he doesn't come to the Cubs, it might not be because of the money because he's going to make money wherever he is. He could say, you know what, I don't like the weather. You know, it's cold, it's windy. Um, you know, I, I bet you he likes the day games. I bet you he likes the fact that say Suzuki's on the team. Uh, I'm sure he loves the fact that Craig counsels there, but it could be something just as simple as the weather, you know, and I know that sounds so like crazy to think about it when you're talking about someone of a, a baseball player of his caliber, but LA's got the best weather. You go to San Diego, it's a little bit better down there, but they got great weather. You're not, you know, it, you're yeah. you're amongst the stars, you're getting paid a lot. My my gut feeling is that the Cubs are serious about signing him. I, I really believe that. I believe and, that too. Yeah, it, but the like a lot of the writers w- that we talked to uh didn't feel like the chance of that happening was very high, but I think some of that is cynicism, and I think that that just comes from years of following the Cubs, and and you know over the years we have found a way to slip on the banana peel. But you can't forget what happened in 2016, and the fact that this farm system is really good right now. Um, I think as soon as Otani figures out where he's going, if it's not with the Cubs, I would look for them to go out and make a splash. They know that you represent kind of the feeling amongst the fan base. It's not just about Otani. It's about building. And you already know that if you don't get Otani, then you better figure out something with Bellinger. And if you don't get Bellinger and you don't get Otani, well, now you've missed the best players on the market this year, a guy that led your team just about to the playoffs last year, comeback player of the year, a former MVP and someone we all like. I think that the, the best part about Bellinger is the joy he plays the game with the success he has, but just it's infectious, you know, and I think Cubs fans really like him and it would be great. You know, if that worked out, it might not. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, they're going to have to do something this this offseason or they're I think that if they just kind of went in and and maybe they made a couple of small moves here and there maybe they went and got Hoskins and for first and you know on a one-year deal and a couple of this and that um I think that they would really uh they would lose people but you know they may go out and what if they get together with Cleveland you saw where they they were talking with uh or at least it's been reported that they were talking with the Indians I'm sorry, the the Guardians, and that's a lifetime of being a baseball fan there and yeah. loving the movie I can't Major get League. Over it. Yeah, I can't right, get right. It. It's so hard to. to it, that's like the only team in our lifetime that actually changed its name, you know, in the in Major League Baseball like that. Wow, well, I guess the Rays, the Devil Rays, right? Ah, but but right. but you know, you saw that. Like, there's you got Shane Bieber. That's you know, one year guy, Cleveland's thinking about trading him. You know, they, the Cubs have this farm system where there's other teams and organizations that are looking and salivating at the potential of adding some of those pieces to their system. I talked to a scout last year with a team in the uh, same division as the, the Cleveland guardians. And he said, I don't really like much of the pitching, uh, outside of Cade Horton, he said, but I would take a lot of these position players. Yeah, I with the Cubs, like here's my fear. We want to be contenders. Like the Cubs were contenders last year. 
you know, in a way. They were, they pretty much were not going to win the division. Milwaukee, other than a little two week window there, pretty much kept everybody at arm's distance. Like it, it wasn't, they weren't going to be caught. People thought the Cubs might. And then the Cubs even slipped and slipped out of the wild card altogether. Um, but here's the thing, Mick. Would the Cubs have been where they were last year without Cody Bellinger? No. Not, not at, at all, all, right? Not, not at all. Not, a, not at all. Okay. So you hypothetically lose that bat unless you go re-sign him. And you have to add an arm. And I'm talking a a minimum number two arm. Right. Really, you need an ace, but at minimum, a number two arm. And so you go and do that, or I'm sorry, you, you need both if you're going to truly contend. But if the Cubs, and, and this is a little bit of me overreacting, you guys can see my anxiety here live <laughs> on the channel. Just relax. Because I, I instantly, as soon as I don't get what I want, which I want Otani, and as soon as I don't get what I want, I go to like this dark corner, especially since my number two guy that I wanted was Juan Soto. Uh, I knew you weren't going to get both. Right. But the odds, it was like, all right, we got to get one of those two guys. Like, you get one of those two guys. I really don't care what happens the rest of the offseason. But now, you, you know, if you don't get Otani, well, now you're not getting either one. So then it shifts to, okay, Yamamoto. If, if he became a Cub, can you imagine him and then Justin Steele? And then you got a lot of the good young arms coming up behind, right. along with Tyon and Kyle Hendricks. You got Assad, you got Jordan Wicks. Like, you, you got guys waiting in the wings who can fill the rest of that pitching roster, but you need the top tier. But then that still leaves you with a hole in the lineup because even if you have that great pitching, like, where's the bat coming from? Yeah. And Bellinger was that guy. He was that threat. He didn't hit 40 bombs, but he was just that guy that was on a tear and was always coming up with the hit. You know, he, all yeah. kinds of clutch hits, making contact, putting the ball in play, having an unbelievable year, comeback player of the year. And with some of these names, I'm just like, that doesn't change the middle of that lineup. Right. You know, it just doesn't do anything. Right. You you got to have that. You, you got to have that star power. And I think the Cubs are very aware of that. That I got that vibe at winter meetings, talking to people that they know. Yeah. They know that that's a piece that they're missing. They've yep. got money. They've got the potential to make trades. You know, you heard Pete Alonzo's name earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I wouldn't, I don't, you know, we'll see what happens. They're, they're not going to do anything until they figure out if Otani is going to shock the world and, and, and come to Chicago. But if he came to Chicago, it would be enormous. I mean, it would be like an earthquake hitting the world of Major League Baseball, yes. and uh, and part of the earthquake would be all the money that would be <laughs> falling in the Wrigley Field because that guy's so valuable. Not yes. just what he does on the field, obviously, but the, just having the the uh, the marketing power that he brings. One side note that I wanted to mention: we didn't get into um, the Rule Five draft happened. Uh, a couple of days ago at winter meetings, right? And the Cubs selected one player. Uh, this is the minor league portion of the Rule 5 draft, right? And that uh, that guy is a middle infielder who is uh, named Hayden Cottrell. He was uh, with San Francisco. Cubs took him in the first round. Didn't hit a whole lot in A Richmond, but apparently he's like, an amazing defensive player. So I, I, I'm all about that for the shortstop spot. Now that you've gone away from the shift, you got to have shortstops who can make plays and yeah. cover. And, you know, there was a time when your shortstop bat at 215, but if they made all the plays, you didn't care. And uh, that's what he hit last year, but apparently he's electric on the field. Now the Cubs, and I knew this was going to happen. The Cubs lost four guys in the Rule 5 draft. And I saw some of these guys play. Uh, first off, Andy Weber, who was injured two years ago after just absolutely ripping apart double-A pitching. And it set him back. And then it took most of the season for him to kind of get back to normal again. But he was the starting shortstop for the Smokies when they won their championship in double-A. And uh, he got selected by Arizona. Uh, that was in... The what was that the second 
the second round, yeah, by Arizona. And then the third round, Cincinnati took Levi Jordan. Ironically, Levi Jordan left, and that's when Andy Weber took over double-A shortstop. Levi Jordan um, really surprised me at how good defensively he ended up being. And, and it was kind of like um, Luis Vasquez, who the Cubs did protect on the 40-man, and his gold glove caliber middle infield shortstop um, moved to triple A. Levi Jordan dropped down and they put him at shortstop and he was really good. Makes all the plays, hits a little bit. He's a good team leader. So uh, good for him, you know, as these guys move on. Uh, Adam Lasky went to Miami and Shelton Reed went to Minnesota in the fourth round. So when you have a good farm system, you lose players. And the Cubs lost four in the minor league portion of the Rule 5 draft. The other thing I wanted to talk about with you was we had our first draft lottery. That was kind of like right out of the chute there. The Cubs are 14th. So uh, I guess that's Cleveland ended up getting the first overall yeah. pick, right? They had a 2% chance yeah, to land like, the top crazy, pick huh? and they got it. And, and I want to say the Reds also uh, – well, they would have had to because the Reds, they were in – that wild card race up until the very end. Remember, they only finished yeah. what three, four games behind yeah. the Cubs. And so, yeah, the Reds uh, ended up, I think, with the number two pick. Benefited the Cubs being 14th, you know, <laughs> they yeah. could have been further back. True, yeah. Um, but I, I, I like it. You know what? You shouldn't be rewarded for tanking. Yeah. Correct. And this will start to kind of work on that a little bit. All right, Chad, uh, tell everyone about what you do at Modern Lending. Well, I actually get to uh privilege of owning half of it. And so some days that's good, some days that's bad. But depending on bad what's when going you gotta on. pay everybody, it's yeah, good. When bad you get to on collect. payday. Yeah. Although payday <laughs> means you have loans coming in. So that's not always bad either. Not too shabby. Uh, now, guys, we've we've been blessed and fortunate enough 13 years in this industry. Uh, we've helped over 10,000 families, literally 10,000 families, whether purchase or refi. Rates have dipped recently. Um, credit card debt in this country is at an all-time high. So whatever market you're in, if I'm not licensed there, I'll hook you up with somebody. I know a lot of people in this industry, uh, but reach out. Even if you just have questions, want to pick brain, uh, run scenarios, ask questions, just get a better knowledge of what's going on in the industry, glad to do that as well. Cell phone on the screen, website, chadanderson.info. And don't forget, Chad's the guy that got me hooked up with uh, with my studio and my home, and he's done that for uh, over 10,000 families and businesses in his uh, illustrious mortgage career. All right, guys, don't forget, too, that the channel is presented by the Tennessee Smokies. I saw the Smokies front office at winter meetings, and yep. they were pretty fired up. They've got their championship ring uh, ordered. And we saw uh, the uh, guys from South Bend and that championship ring was incredibly amazing. And they're saying, hey, these guys are going to have one like that. But they also have a team store full of great swag. And you can find out for yourself, SmokiesBaseball.com backslash store. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll talk Cubs baseball again tomorrow.